In this video, we're going to learn to install and use Ray Hunter. But first, we need to learn about the rays we'll be hunting. Stingray is the brand name of an IMSI catcher, aka cell site simulator, a type of surveillance tool used by law enforcement and intelligence agencies to intercept mobile phone traffic and track the location of cellular devices. The IMSI mimics a legitimate cell tower tricking nearby phones into connecting to it. Once a phone connects, the device can capture its IMSI number, track its location, and can even intercept calls, texts, and data. IMSI catchers are problematic because they collect data from all the phones in the area, not just the target. They can also cause widespread disruptions to phone services and even have the potential to inadvertently prevent and disconnect emergency calls. And while end-to-end -end encryption can protect the contents of a call or text, metadata, location, and identifying information are all still vulnerable. Most troubling, however, is that law enforcement agencies consistently use the technology illegally, without warrants and with little to no oversight. Court cases revealing the illegal and unconstitutional use of IMSI catchers include United States versus Lambies, 2016, U.S. District Court, Southern District of New York. State versus Andrews, 2016, Maryland Court of Special Appeals. Prince Jones versus United States, 2017, D.C. Court of Appeals. Despite the widespread and illicit use of IMSI catchers, little is known about them. To thwart transparency, vendors sign law enforcement to NDAs and prosecutors will sometimes drop charges in order to protect IMSI catcher TTP from discovery. But worst of all, the government will sometimes create parallel construction investigations in which they essentially lie to cover up the original illegal source of their evidence. In the interest of transparency and justice, the Electronic Frontier Foundation has created Ray Hunter. The EFF is a nonprofit that defends civil liberties in the digital world and describes Ray Hunter as a new open source tool that runs off an affordable mobile hotspot that we hope empowers everyone, regardless of technical skill, to help search out CSS cell site simulators around the world. You will need some technical skill, but setting up Ray Hunter on the target Orbix Speed RC400L Verizon 4G LTE mobile Wi-Fi hotspot hardware is super simple. Let's unbox the Orbix. So there's some booklets and some cables and the thing we bought is in here too, so that's good. If you've ever programmed a Ponagachi or prepped a pineapple clone, you'll have no trouble installing Ray Hunter. To follow along with this build, you'll need an Orbix Speed RC400L Verizon for GLTE Mobile Wi-Fi Hotspot. A SIM card, installed. A USB-C data cable, included. Linux. If you don't have a Linux PC, you can install from a Linux virtual machine. I recommend my tutorial, How Hackers Install Kali for Free, and you can too. Hey, did you know that Kali has always been free? It's true, and don't let anyone trick you into assuming it's not free by saying that it is free, and that you can install it for free, what with their duplicitous, double fakey reverse psychology. A special, insincere shout out to everyone who, in direct contravention of the hacker ethos, suppressed information information by reporting the video, depriving the intended audience of aspiring hackers. Also, in most instances, you probably shouldn't hack the police. Fire up your Kali VM, go to the Ray Hunter GitHub page. As always, you can find the accompanying tutorial with links and Linux commands at cyberspacemanmike.com. Download release.tar. Change directory to downloads. CD downloads. I'm going to create a folder for all the Ray Hunter files and move release.tar into it. MKDIR Ray Hunter. MV release.tar ray hunter. CD ray hunter. Unzip release.tar. Tar xvf release.tar. Now turn on the Orbic by pressing and holding the power button for three seconds and plug it into the PC. VMware will prompt you to connect the device to the virtual machine. Run the install script. sudo.slash install.sh. It will reboot and VMware will prompt you to connect the device again. If you see the script declare success, that's good. If it didn't work, check that section at github.com forward slash EFF org forward slash Ray Hunter for installation workarounds. In your browser, go to localhost colon 8080. Here you can begin and stop recordings and look at PCAP files. You can see that my recordings have persisted across the reinstall and should likewise survive a device update. Be sure to start a recording. 
Let's look at the device. Note that my Orbix says no service. It's possible and even likely that you can detect IMSI catchers without the Orbix having an active cell service plan. That's because the SIM still broadcasts its IMSI, especially on 2G, 3G networks, and attempts to authenticate to any tower willing to talk to it. At the top of the display, there's a green line. This indicates that Ray Hunter is running and recording PCAP, short for packet captures, i.e. network traffic data. If it turns red, you've likely encountered an IMSI catcher. But this indicator is ephemeral and will reset when the device is rebooted or a new recording is started via the web UI. We can also look for catcher indicators in the PCAP recordings. Let's plug it back in. Time for troubleshooting with Cyberspace Man. Plugging it back in failed. The benefit of liking and subscribing to this channel is that you'll see me encounter every possible problem and can learn from my mistakes. Turns out, I was unable to reconnect to the Orbic through the web UI the second time around owing to UDEV permission problems. Here's the solution. First, let's make sure everything is good to go by updating and fixing missing. sudo app dash get update dash dash fix dash missing. Next, install ADB. sudo app install android dash tools dash ADB. Then, we have to determine the vendor ID of our connected Orbic. Lesesb. Here it's 05C6 and yours is 2. Now we have to establish our UDEV permissions. sudo nano etc slash udev slash rules d slash 51 dash android dot rules. Add the following line. Subsystem equals equals quote USB quote comma ATTR fancy bracket ID vendor fancy bracket equals equals quote 05C6 quote comma mode equals quote 0666 quote comma group equals quote plug dev quote. Now we have to change permissions of the file. Sudo chmada plus r slash etc slash udev slash rules d slash 51 dash android dot rules. Reload udev rules. Sudo udevam control dash dash reload dash rules. Sudo udevam trigger. Unplug the orbic. Restart adb. adb kill dash server. adb start dash server. Plug the orbic back in and assign it to the VM when prompted. Now run adb devices. adb devices. Now run ADB forward TCP colon 8080 TCP colon 8080. And that's it. Again, you can simply copy and paste these commands from the tutorial at cyberspacemanmike.com. Now that we can access the web UI, we can see that there are no warnings, but in the interest of ruling out false negatives, let's look at some PCAP files in Wireshark. IMSI catchers like to run downgrade attacks, so there are a few indicators we can look for, like the code A5 slash 0 for disabled encryption and or the IMSI being sent in plain text. Okay, I looked at the PCAPs and they're pretty intense, with many indicators suggesting our Orbic interacted with a CSS and just as many indicators suggesting it didn't. Unpack all that is going to need its own video and I want to save some of this for a B-Sides meetup discussion so to be continued. If you've caught a catcher by watching the watchers be sure to let the EFF know by contacting them via signal username electronicfrontierfoundation.90. Also be mindful of their disclaimer. Be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to be notified when we dissect the PCAPs. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.